Welcome to the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast, where we talk all things Freemasonry while drinking an old fashioned. I'm Brian. And I'm Russ. In the middle of us, you will see not only this beautiful gold. Yeah, straighten that up because I didn't do a good job there. there yeah, we go. there you go. <laughs> uh, this beautiful, uh, is that gold? I think it's brass. Brass um, award, but we'll come back to that. But we have Right Worshipful Carter Green. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So um, we're going to talk about what we have here in front of us, which is awesome. But Carter, have you watched any of our episodes? Many, many times. You have. Very good. Very good. So you kind of know what we're all about. And so we're going to jump right into it. So what we like to do on the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast, we like to know as much about the man as we do the Mason. So who is Carter Green, the man? Where do I start? Uh, uh, born in, uh, and raised in Wellington, Kansas, okay. um, little town south of Wichita, about 40 minutes, and uh, that was my hometown. And um, my parents encouraged music from a very early age. Um, any musical instrument, they saw that I had musical talent early on. Okay. And my dad played guitar, my mom played guitar, my grandpa played guitar, my sister played guitar, and uh, so... Graduated high school, Wellington High, 1993, and uh, then I uh, went on to the University of Chicago, where I was a music major, okay. uh, composition, theory, and orchestration. Okay. Now, I already knew how to play 14 different instruments. Okay, that's all, but whatever. That's yeah. the way it came down, because, right. you know, a, a lot of other guys were, like, chasing girls and stuff. Yeah. Me, I was in my bedroom practicing the guitar. Right. You know <laughs> I was a nerd. An instrument? Not a single one. <laughs> Not, do you know how to play any yeah, instrument? And trumpet. That's it. Oh, <laughs> you do? Okay. All right. All right. Still very much a nerd. Okay. Uh, and so uh, what's amazing, and my wife said to me, she said, you know, the things that make you nerdy as a kid make you an awesome adult. I agree. I agree. So I turned that passion for this specific set of skills into a career. Okay. So after I graduated from college, I came back to my hometown of Wellington and uh, said, what am I going to do with my life? And uh, so I started recording uh, uh, local artists, just musicians, you know, bands. And uh, before you knew it, people were saying, well, there's a guy in Wellington can record you. And so before I knew it, I had people coming in and out of the house at all hours of the night. And I said, hey, wait a minute. There's something here. This isn't a hobby. This is a business. All right. It became a business. So at age 23, I waltzed into the bank with my business plan and my sales projections and I said, uh, uh, Mr. Roger, I'm, I'm going to need a, a loan for a quarter million dollars to start a recording studio in Wellington, Kansas. <laughs> See, Russ is a banker, and I know he's good. He looked at me like I was out of my mind. <laughs> Maybe like like we just side eyed you a little bit. <laughs> right, yeah. like in Wellington, really. You right. think, and you think you can make a go of this? I said, Yes, I can, sir. And he looked at the figures, and he said, Okay. And that was in 2000. And he gave you the loan? He gave me the loan. Oh, wow. <laughs> yep. And okay. so then I started Green Jean Studios in Wellington, Kansas in the year 2000. Green Jean Studios. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Studios. Uh, why Green Jeans? Uh, because I've always been Mr. Green Jeans. You know, from I, I Captain Kangaroo. Captain Kangaroo. Kangaroo. Right. Right. I, yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's always been Mr. Green Jeans. I actually wear green jeans. Okay. <laughs> right. I can wear them if I... I, I think Very I've got cool. some green slacks. I, you know, it's a good thing that I met my wife because I had no fashion sense before I met her. Right. Right, right. <laughs> that, that always helps. You got to yeah. Oh, yeah. She about. dresses me. She dresses me. So you're married. <laughs> yes, sir. And how long? What's her name? Yeah. See, we're trying to save we're, you from having to yes. buy a dress. Yeah. So then we're we're trying to introduce. lead you just a little so bit. So you've been married for how long? And, and to whom? 15 years to Jamie Green, who is the uh, photo video editor for the Wichita Eagle. Oh, okay. nice, nice. And Anybody you else in your home? I have three children. Okay. I have uh, my oldest daughter, Catherine, who is an English teacher at Mulvane High. Okay. okay. My oldest son also was raised just two years ago and is the fifth generation Mason in my We're going to talk about that later. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I believe I met him and, uh, uh, grandma. Yeah, grand yeah, dad and grandpa aren't much proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, not much. And currently serving as senior warden at Wellington 150. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And, and you have a prankster seven-year-old? I have a seven-year-old, Cameron. He has been a blessing in our lives. Uh, yeah, he uh, on April Fool's Day, he got up before everybody else, and he snuck into Jamie's video editing suite, and he posted-noted her entire computer... <laughs> Nice. 
And then after dinner, he gave me, he said, Dad, you want an Oreo? I said, yeah, sure, son. I love Oreos. He had replaced the cream filling with mayonnaise. Wow. <laughs> Kid after my own heart. Like pranks, so. so that's my family. So All right. That's, that is Carter the man. Yeah. So now, as normal on this show, we want to know about the Masons. So um, tell us your Masonic background, just the beginning to what you're doing today in Masonry. Absolutely. So um, it started with my great-grandfather. Um, he was a Mason. My grandfather was a Mason. My father was a Mason. And I remember growing up seeing my dad just being a good person, just doing the right thing. And uh, I'll never forget one day we were driving along the road and there was an accident. And dad pulled over and stopped to see if he could lend assistance. Mm -hmm. And he did. And the cops came out and everybody was okay. And as we were driving away, dad said, son, that's what Masons do. We take care of people. Um, and uh, that, plus just being a great father and, and instructing me in the ways of being a good man. He and walked the walk. He uh, he did, not only did he talk the talk, he walked the walk and yeah. still continues. He just had his 90th birthday. Oh, wow. So right. happy birthday, Dad. Ha happy birthday, Mr. Happy. Green. And birthday. thanks for everything. That's awesome. Okay. Awesome. So from there... I couldn't wait to become a Freemason because yeah. I saw all this great things. It's a very strong tradition in my family. And uh, so I was raised at Albert Pike in 1993 at age 18. Okay. Um, after I came back after college to my hometown of Wellington, of course, I demitted to my um, local lodge of Wellington. Okay. Where I got to uh, understand a little bit more about who we are and what we do. And so then when my son said, Dad... I can't wait to become a Freemason. I said, son, you got it. And uh, we didn't have a senior deacon that knew the part. So I said, okay, I guess I better learn the parts. And uh, yeah. so in our Lodge of Wellington, we were able to put him through all three degrees with very little help. Um, we did honestly have to call in sure other do. brothers, yeah. as a lot of rural lodges have to do these days, sure. um, to call in help from other lodges, but they were fantastic, and it was a beautiful degree, and I'm so proud. Awesome. Awesome. So so now, let's come to you as a Mason. So you're a Mason, and obviously you worked your way up. When you got on the officer line, in what position did you start? Tyler. And did you go any order or did you hop? I did hop a little bit because Wellington Lodge is a smaller lodge. And so I went from there to uh, junior warden, senior warden, and then master, which was what was really cool about that year is that my father preceded me in each of the chairs. Oh, oh. Very. so what year were you master? 2010. 2010. Okay. Wellington 150. And it was so cool to see my dad... Uh, precede me and show me the right ways to do things okay. and to instruct me. And so then it was so cool because he was master in 2019. I was senior warden. The very next year, I followed in dad's footsteps and I became master in 2010. Okay, gotcha. Okay, good. Nice. Well, um, the year you were master, was there anything that you, at the beginning of the year, you wanted to do, a goal that you had that you didn't get accomplished um, and why? No, I, I, we accomplished everything we set out to do. Wellington is a bunch of guys that are very organized. Uh, I'm very proud of those brothers. They, they say, okay, guys, this is what charity we want to accomplish this year, and this is how we're going to do it. Okay. That year, um, there was a children's ward of the hospital for children that didn't have the use of their legs. Mm -hmm. And so part of their uh, rehabilitation and recovery was a certain tricycle, which is kind of expensive, that they could pedal with their hands. Mm -hmm. okay. And so as master, I said, guys, let's, get, let's, let's buy that uh, special tricycle for these kids that don't have the use of their legs. Overwhelmingly, the lodge approved. Okay. And we bought that special rehabilitation tricycle for the kids so that they could still ride a bike even though they didn't have the use of the legs. I was very proud of that. Faith, hope, and charity. You gotta yeah, love it, yeah, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Blue Law, are, do you have any involvement in the shrine, the Scottish Rite or the York Rite? I'm Scottish Rite. Scottish Rite? 
Okay. So, what kind of involvement do you have there? Are you are you are you a member, but not are not super active now because you have yeah. other stuff going on? Well, I have a lot going on. Right. <laughs> so let's segue into what I've got going on. Okay. Uh, so after doing the work and, and and getting into it and and really really starting to learn um, our traditions and our history, I got a call from Grand Lecturer Right Marshall Jim Miller, okay. and uh, he said, "You know, Carter." You're pretty good at this stuff. Do you have any interest in pursuing a path towards Grand Lecturer? I said, I was just going to call you. I was, it, it was uncanny. Like, okay. literally, I was just going to call him and I say, hey, Grant, hey, Jim, do you, do, you think, do you think I could do this? Yeah. His encouragement and his friendship has put me on this path. So, thanks, Jim. Um, and this journey has started and has blossomed into so much more. Because, you know, when you're a young Mason, you just see kind of the superficial right. and things go by really quickly. Mm -hmm. But then when you start to actually do the work, certain knowledge comes into your mind. You start to understand the lessons. Yes. And yeah. certain things like, oh, oh, that's, oh, oh, that's why we do that. And so um, he saw that interest in me and he called me and I said, sure, I think, I think. I don't know if I can do it, but I'm sure going to try. And so since that time, I went ahead and got my B card, got my A card, and I'm getting ready to test for my master's card here shortly. Nice. Um, I am the currently in the prospective Grand Lecturers program, and I have met the best guys along the way. You know them all. Yes. Dale, most worshipful Dale Morrow, yep. Bob Talbot. You'll, most you'll see him soon. Bob, you've already seen. Yes. And, and these guys are giants. In our organization, sure. they are so knowledgeable. Yeah. On the esoteric side, they are just machines. Yeah. Oh yes, absolutely. And I have been so blessed to have them as great friends and mentors. Yeah. And, well, and, and they probably are, are happy too to see some youth working through to to do that. Yeah, very um, much so. You know, another one that I'd like to see come up the ranks that I think is um, may have aspirations. If not, he should. I, I could see Chris Collins kind of working his way that direction. Yeah. I could see Garth Bloom working Garth his way. Bloom, I mean, the, yeah. these they have a nice, cool. Demeanors, and they're young enough that they can do it for another twenty years. You know, because yes. we need it. Yeah. So, so normally in this room there are only just the three people: Brian and I, and the guests that we have. Correct. But today there is somebody else in this room that needs a little bit of explanation. So we need you need to enlighten us with ah. on our friend Emmy. On our friends. Oh, Miss Emmy. And oh, uh, she's just, here. Yeah, so first just, of all, tell us what it is yes. and then how you got it. Okay. So, uh, as I said before, I, um, my job is to compose music and produce music. Um, I play 14 different instruments, and I own a recording studio and music production facility. Um, my wife, working for the Wichita Eagle, when they... Uh, the, the story of Father Capon. Now, folks in Wichita say Capon. Capon. The family pronounces it Capon. Okay. Because it is a Czech family, and the proper pronunciation is Kapon. The reason for the confusion is that a bishop visited Wichita okay. 50 years ago or so, and was reading off this list of names, and he said, Father Emil Capon, and it stuck. Mm -hmm. So that's why in Wichita we generally say Capon. I work with Father Emil's nephew, Ray Kapon. Okay. He says it's Kapon. So the family says it's Kapon. It's Capon. It's Capon. Easy. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, so the story of this American hero, this person of faith who saved countless lives on the battlefields of Korea. Right. My father served in Korea. And I was brought up in a very patriotic household. Um, you think about what the Korean War. Oh, you know, so many men died. Why? It's senseless. Well, do you have a Samsung phone? Do you have an LG TV? LG washer dryer. Yeah. If those men and women had not gone to Korea, the whole continent would be North Korea today. Kind of yeah. a scary thought. Yeah. And so my dad, um, being in that in that war, um, when the Eagles said we're not just going to make a story about this, we're going to do a documentary film about this American hero, Medal of Honor winner, posthumously, and. Um, 
I said, yes, absolutely. I'm in, 100%. And they said, we want this film to have a composed, authentic soundtrack because it's one of our own. It's, it's a, it's a yeah. Kansas native. He's from Pilsen, Kansas. He's being considered for sainthood by the Vatican currently. His life was virtuous. His, he, he, he performed acts of heroism that we can't even imagine. And so when they said they finally found his DNA-tested remains and they're bringing him home to Kansas, right? it was a big deal. Yeah, right. It news spread like wildfire. So the Wichita Eagle said, we have to make a film about We're going to do the piece. Yes. Yeah. They contacted me. And they said, you know, I'd worked for the Eagle before doing music for, you know, and sure. uh, to help them out with their um, various videos and, and films. And they said, we want this composed rather than using canned music. Okay. Because yeah. because the emotion of the thing. Right. Think about every time you watch a, a movie. Right. If you if you watch Star Wars and you take away the soundtrack. It doesn't have to say, you know, it builds you up. Yeah. No, you, the music yeah, it, it's is, no different. It than, is everything. It let's doesn't just, work. Well, let's just yeah. dumb it down. It's no different. Like if you go and work out, different music sets that tone too. So sure. yeah, music yeah. is super powerful. It's super powerful. As Freemasons, there's a music is very important to us. Mm -hmm. It's in our degree work. Right. Um, and so they said we want something composed for this film, and I said absolutely. And then Travis Hine, the uh, filmmaker and, and prime resident, and my wife, Jamie Green, co-producer, Michael Rohrman, uh, executive producer um, and CEO of The Eagle, um, they got together and they said, we're going to make this film. And Travis would come down to the studio and we would score the film. He brought the, 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 vi the video, you know, and we together we would say, what kind of emotion do we want to bring to this particular... There's one scene in particular in the film where they're finally, at last, after 70 years, bringing him home to Pilsen, Kansas. And I wrote an orchestral, uh, what I call the hero's theme. This is welcoming home an American hero uh, who was lost for 70 years. And that scene, the emotion, just wells up. And I'm so proud. That's probably the proudest moment of my entire career is that scene. And that's what warranted you. That, was it that particular piece that warranted the Emmy or was it just the music as a whole? Well, I, I composed the, the score for the entire film. Okay. Along with, there was one song done by John Corbell, good friend of mine, Jack Corbell. And um, he wrote a song for Father Capon too. It was in the film. But I scored the entire um, and produced it right there in the studio in Wellington. Love it. Wow. Yeah. And what's funny is, guys, you may not know this, but the technology for orchestral um, music has come to the point where I can do it all myself. Um, what they do is they record samples of an orchestra playing, say, this note. Right. And when you push the key on the keyboard, it's a recording of those violins playing that note. So it's not a synthesizer. Mm -hmm. It's the real musicians playing the real notes, so I can tell them what to do. So expand that out and to And when to bring in different pieces. Exactly. Right. And then expand that to the entire orchestra now. Now imagine what you can do with just one guy. And invariably, when that scene comes up, everyone says, was that the Wichita Symphony? Right. Where'd you get... Where, oh, who was the orchestra? It was me. Oh. I, did, I did it all right there in my studio. That's crazy. Using... The samples. It's called sampling technology. It's a whole new That's a thing. That's it's amazing. a whole new That's thing amazing. in audio. Yeah. So, any aspirations other than a Grand Lecture to move up the Grand Lodge line? Would you like to be Grand Master one day? If they we, ask, well, listen, we know people. <laughs> if they ask me, I'd be happy to serve. That that's great. That's great. So you are currently a district deputy. Yes, sir. So how do you like it? I love it. Talk to us about it. My favorite thing is. They say it's the best job in Masonry. I agree. Boy, howdy. I am having the time of my life. I love it. I love going to meet new brothers. And um, my district is um, 4E, which includes Kiowa, Anthony, Harper, Wellington, my own lodge, and Kingman. And every time I go to these lodges and meet these brothers, they are just so welcoming and, 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 and so encouraging, you know. Um, the, the DDGM position is not one of, you know, pounding nope. you down or it saying you're doing something wrong. No, the, quite the quite the opposite. 
You're the true liaison between the lodges and the Grand Lodge. The, the idea is to connect us together yeah. and to help each other. And so I'm so thrilled to be able to, if a lodge has, their, has an issue, they have a problem, I'm so happy to say, okay, tell me. And let's let's get that fixed. Let's get yeah. that worked on, like so it. we can all improve in Kansas here. Love um, it. Yeah, love it. All right, tough question. All right, this is the would you rather? She have to pick one. Okay, would you rather have a line full top to bottom of proficiency card holder masons, or or a line full of inspirational and motivated leaders? Definitely the second. Definitely. Leaders over proficiency. Definitely the second because we have... And this is from a proficiency card holder. Yeah, so. the, 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 my, my reasoning for that is um, we have plenty of ritualists in the state that can supply the deficiencies. Okay, Now, every Mason in his heart should really want to preserve our history Fair. and preserve our traditions. So by all means, do everything you can. But I also understand that some brethren have problems with memory and may have difficulties with the language. Remember, this is 1700s language, guys. Sure. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's plain English, but it's English from a couple of hundred years ago. I think a lot of the obstacles in that, though, are the Mason. Um, right. Uh, on an episode before, uh, we had uh, Brother Fred Smith on. and it's amazing. And he got all of his cards just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. And he's like 65. Yeah. So It's never too late. Right. It's so, never too late. And yes. side note, did you think that was going to be his answer? No. <laughs> Me either. No. So a, we asked this question no a lot. Years. So if you... The right I'm a ritualist, yes. and I will still say that, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because what we do in the world, and and hey, we agree. You don't have to yeah. convince yeah. us. No, no, I, I'm telling you, I would rather have that brother in lodge and giving to his community and making a difference in the world. Am I going to give him a hard time because he got a wherewith or why with ought? I'd have lost a hundred on this one. You would have, yeah. Well, you wouldn't have bet me on this Be, one, right? Because because. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes total sense yeah, because it, it does. because I, I I'm on the I, listen. And now I have the greatest respect for our traditions and right. our and our history. Right. And it has the landmarks of Freemasonry yeah. must be preserved. Yes, without question. Yep. Okay. Yet there are brothers in Kansas that can do amazing things. And not be proficient in the ritual. There's a lot of them that do amazing things. It just they don't have the they don't have the cards, but they they can do the work too. Proficiency oh, yes. is not just identified by. A card I'm to not me. worried about cards. Yeah. Right. Um, right. I mean, but they're hey, listen. It is a great end of to say, you proved it. If a brother can do one good part in a degree, and that's what he does, that's his thing. That's his. That's his, that's his thing. Yeah. Then that's a good thing. One hundred percent. Good day. One hundred percent. All day. day long. We agree. All day long. And that's the way. That's how we get through the work in Wellington. Yep. Yeah, you know, yep. this this guy yep. does this. This guy does this, and we come together, you yep. know, to do this. So we love our fraternity. The passion you can hear it here. Oh, that's so the best. Why do we struggle today getting members into our fraternity? What What are the challenges? What What do you see in how How do we fix that? Is it a brand issue? No, it is a an, an issue of the digital age, and where everyone gets their fix on the screen i've like seen where you're at right now. i see i know <laughs> but i see it listen my wife and i have been very um attentive to limiting our son's screen time and getting him into socialization right. activities one thing i love about the lodge is you go online and you can get trolled you can get bullied you can get you know all manner of nasty stuff heading your way, but when you come to be with your brothers, it's on the level. Yeah, you can stand up and say your piece, and you're not gonna get criticized. You're yeah. not gonna get trolled, right? right? Every brother in that lodge can stand up and be heard, Fair. and that's one thing about our organization that I think you don't get online. So I think the answer is saying, hey, guys, this is something that your voice can be heard. You're not going to be criticized or ridiculed. 
You know? Not much. Well, I mean, th- some of us older guys, we get ridiculed a lot. <laughs> uh, wow. Well, hey, he's younger me. than both of us. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm consider gonna, myself one of the oldest. Let me just tell you, we're closer than age than we're closer than age. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys look great. Oh, appreciate it. Appreciate <laughs> that, so. so I think that's the thing for membership. And that's one of the lanes, you know, the Grand Lodge has outlined. Okay, so. 2030. Absolutely. Um, so, um, gosh, what are my thoughts on membership? I think man to man, you know, seeing the example of like, man, he is doing some really good. Let our works speak for who we are. Right. Tell people about what the Kansas Masonic Foundation is doing. Right. Tell people about what we're doing in our communities. Okay. We're making this world a better place one man at a time. Yeah. Let them know that that's what's going on and um, say, hey, if you want to be a part of it, just ask me. Yeah. yeah. And I'd be thrilled to uh, put you down the path. Yeah. Love it. So you've watched this before. We always end with uh, the most important question of the day is something has to go. Okay. So on the screen, (laughs) it's going to be a little bit different because... Which one stays? Oh, boy. Who would you want to work with most right now? So, on the screen, everyone, you see Snoop D-O-double-G. You see Pharrell, a great producer. Um, right? Post you, Malone. We're tra- tracking so far. We got Post Malone mm-hmm. and we got Dr. Drake. Now, I can tell you, Russ is looking up here, and I think Russ knew one of them. Not all. Is that fair? I knew only one of them. Okay, you knew Snoop, right? So, yes. Okay. First, first of all. Who, which I- one? St- who would you? Today, I want to work... You want to work with them all because they're geniuses. That, who is the one that you want to work with the most? Brian, that's like asking me who's my favorite kid. I, I can tell you my favorite <laughs> kid. So it, it changes by the day. Yeah. You know so. what? I got to go with Post Malone. And I'll tell you why. You no, just, no, no. Yeah, I would most want to work with him. Yep. Because um, I think that he is taking the electronic genre and moving it into another era. Yep. I think he's doing things in music that are sort of forward-looking. Yep. Um, love all those other guys. Their contributions cannot be underrated. Yeah. But I, I'm, I dig Post Malone. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't think I would go in for the tattoos, but uh, love his music. Hey, good face right. tattoo goes a long way nowhere. Ah, uh, so not for me. <laughs> all right. So that's it, Carter. Enjoy thank you this. for joining thank the Old Fashioned Masonic Podcast. Cheers. Thanks, brothers.